right, everybody, it is Steve with Real Progressives. You know, I've been looking around watching all the different groups on Facebook and on Twitter, and the arguments, the discussions have all gone to just, hey, we've got to raise so much money for Bernie, or hey, we've got to raise so much money for so-and-so to get them on the debate stage, or hey, we've got to, and, and, and it's no longer, there is no more discussion about policy. There's no more discussion about what really matters. It's now like full-blown personality contests, and the people on the outside are simply talking about all the things that are wrong in the world, and so few are talking about what is right and what they want. I'm not talking about what, what is right today, but what is right that we actually want out of this thing. Because I'm telling you right now, if we allow this election to go down without us dreaming a bigger dream without us considering what it is exactly that we're fighting for we're going to end up allowing the centrists to come in they're going to tell us exactly what is wrong with our programs we're going to have obama come through and we're going to have all the other illumin you know illuminaries uh, of the democratic party telling us how we've all got to unite they're going to start telling us about how, you know, we've got to start being realistic. They're going to start telling us how, you know, hey, guys, that's just a little bit too far. And we're going to believe them because they're going to start pounding in fear of what another term of Donald Trump would look like. They're going to start making us think only about Donald Trump. You're not going to think about what it would be like to have any meaningful programs. It's just going to be pure what team are you on? Do you want Trump? And it's already starting. It's already starting. You can see every time somebody tries to talk about what the issues are, what, what really matters in this election, it's already just about, I mean, look, what is it? Uh, it's April 7th, 2019. April, folks, April 7th, 2019. And we're already at the point where folks are really not even willing to talk policy. I don't understand this. I don't understand it. But I can tell you this. I keep thinking about what it would look like if we had a different dream, if we were thinking bigger. And going back to a time when maybe we thought of things on a grander scale. And I just kept thinking to myself, did America ever do great things? I don't know. Did we ever have dreams of going to the moon, going further in space? Did we ever have dreams of doing things better than just fighting for some candidate, fighting for some party, fighting against some other candidate? You know, most of my life I've spent with diminished expectations. Somebody else didn't think I could achieve something. Someone else imposed their own small world on me. Someone else tried to make me get into a box I couldn't stand to be in. I felt claustrophobic. I always felt like there was so much more to life that I wasn't experiencing. And it wasn't about money. It wasn't about you know, some, having the most stuff. It was usually about being boxed in and not being able to consider all the things that were going through my head. All the dreams that I had would always feel like they were too far away, like somebody else was determining what was possible and what was not possible. Like somebody else's lowered expectations made me the crazy one for wanting something better. I never quite understood why that was so normal, why that was the, the way it was. And if you stepped out, you were the crazy person. And it literally, you look at people today, and you got people saying, why are they getting an art degree? Oh, they're getting a degree in basket weaving. Or they're getting some degree in some humanities or philosophy or something like that. And I think, 
When did we start boxing people in, cutting off the realm of possibilities, and telling them that it was too big of a dream? And I can't help but think these political elections, these campaigns, have something to do with that. Now, I'll tell you, things have obviously changed over the course of time. There was a time when they thought big. They thought about sending a man to the moon. They thought about traveling the universe. They thought about solving major problems. Ingenuity and creativity were an American thing. It was a pride thing, a national pride thing. Now it's a corporate pride thing. Now it's which corporation can win. And that corporation's global in nature, so it doesn't really have anything to do with our nation. It doesn't really have anything to do with anything but profit. And I keep thinking to myself, if we don't get this Green New Deal through, there's not going to be dreams to be had anyway. I mean, the planet will still be here. We won't be. And I keep wondering, what, what, would, what would the world look like if we took the shackles off of our minds? If we stopped allowing people to dumb down our expectations? And we stopped allowing people to tell us that we're dreaming too big? How different would things be if we followed our passions, if we pursued the things that we liked and loved? How many little boys that enjoyed tap dancing or ballet but were teased and tormented that they were going to be thought of as gay or something like that never followed their passions, never joined the theater, never did whatever? How many people would have written books, great books, done great research if they weren't mocked and ridiculed? What if the pay were better? How different would things be? You know, I think, think often about how many quick shortcut answers we come up with because people have just lost the ability to dream a better dream. They've forgotten what it's like to think beyond just feeding themselves for the day. And the people that do have the money, I promise you, they're watching reality TV. I don't understand it. We've lost the very important skill set, trait, of dreaming a bigger dream. And it's important that we capture that back. And not just certain people capture it, but all of us. Because if we're not dreaming a bigger dream, we're never going to progress. We're never going to see amazing things happen again. We're going to be in a prison of our own making. Trapped in the cell of our minds and the collective, the hive mind. Limited ideas, limited choices, limited scope, limited vision. Folks, think about how much complexity there is in just the basics of nature, the basics of the chemical compounds that make up the human body and thought. Think about the complexity of our atmosphere. Think about a quasar. Think about a black hole. Think about all the galaxies. 
Think about all the research and development and what we could do. Think about the unexplored oceans. Think about the unexplored terrain of our minds as well. And as you enter into this campaign cycle again, and people start just trying to get you to focus once again on fundraising and cheering somebody's name constantly, even the people you really like. Remember, their job is to serve us. And it's our job to tell them what serving us means. And if we're just going to cheer their name, then all we're going to get is their vision. And I assure you, as much as I love Bernie Sanders and others, their vision's too small for me. It takes all of us to paint that vision. Don't let the election cycle take away your imagination or your willingness to speak up for what it would take to really, really fulfill everything that you want in this life. I'm Steve Crumbine with Real Progressives. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah.